Electric types are known to be incredibly fast, but a bit lacking in the defense department. They're only weak to ground types, and ironically, the ones that have the highest defense are quad weak to earthquakes. The third highest defense stat is held by Rotom, who among some other great electric types can be found in X and Y. And fortunately, we are able to find my favorite electric type Jolteon in this game, but let me know what your favorite electric type is down in the comments below. Encountering a ground type Pokemon in this run could be devastating, since hardcore Nuzlocke rules mean that any Pokemon that faints is boxed forever. I can only catch the first first electric type found in any area, no items from the bag are allowed in battle, I always play on set mode, and no mega evolution is allowed before the Elite Four. Also, I can't level past the next boss fight's highest level Pokemon before entering that fight. So join me as I attempt to beat a Pokemon Y Hardcore Nuzlocke using only electric types. You want us to call you Epic Gamer? Uh, no, just Axel is fine. You want us to call you Chaddington? Uh, definitely not. Let's just stick with my name, huh? You want us to call you Hubba Hubba? Okay, Shauna, get away from me! As I'm being relentlessly chased through Santa Loon Forest, I find my first encounter. It's the boy, Pikachu. Now, very unfortunately, Cheerios the Pikachu has a minus defense nature, which is gonna matter a whole lot in the early game, and that boost in attack doesn't do anything. What are you gonna do, handsome? Well, after first getting as far away from you as possible, I'm gonna take on the first gym leader, Viola, and her bug types. And Viola's first Pokemon is a Surskit, which is perfect for Cheerio since we're super effective using Thundershock, which does about half damage. Surskit goes for a completely useless water sport, followed up by a quick attack, which triggers our static ability, which doesn't matter at all since we just take it out with another Thundershock. Before the fight, I made sure to get Cheerios as close to level 13 as possible, which means we get Thunder Wave upon leveling up, which we can use on Vivalon right away. We then get hit by Infestation, which is going to do 4 passive damage per turn on top of whatever damage Vivalon deals. My Thundershock looks like it's going to be a 3-hit KO, as we then get hit down to just 11 HP, after which we can hit Vivalon down into the red. Vivalon then gets paralyzed, leaving us at 7 HP before Viola goes for a potion, and it's looking like after a Thundershock, it might not be enough to go for another one. Left on 3 HP, however, Cheerios managed to pull out a crit, taking out the Vivalon and claiming our first gym badge. After our victory, we move on to Paris Promenade. I mean, Lumio City. I've been playing too much Mario Kart. And on Route 5, we can encounter either a Plusle or Minin, and we end up getting Minin, even though I kind of prefer Plusle. Terrible special attack lowering nature aside, on Route 9, we can also encounter ourselves a Helioptile. How about this? Listen to this, dude. Would you like to trade a Love Disc? for my Steelix. Sir, not only are you the dumbest guy in all of Pokemon, you can literally just catch a Love Disk right outside the Pokemon Center. And speaking of finding Pokemon, my next encounter is on Route 10, and I happen to find an Emolga, and I could have found both Eevee and Electrike here, but I guess we'll make do. And with that, it's time to take on Grant and his Rock Types, a fight I was pretty scared to go into since a lot of our Pokemon have minus defense natures, and on top of that, we have a really bad matchup versus Tyrant, but I start by going for a Rock Smash against Amora. I then get taken down to just 3 HP P as I can go for another Rock Smash, taking it out, leaving just Tyrant. And just the fact that Dragon resists Electric alone is enough to make this thing a threat, but it also hits like a truck, taking Rice Krispies down to half health, after which I can heal up 10 HP with an Orum Berry. I then go for a Charm to lower this thing's offensive capabilities as another Rock Tomb hits me down under half. Stomp goes first because of Rock Tomb lowering speed, but it doesn't flinch me and I can get another Charm off. Then after I survive on 1 HP, I can get a final charm off, taking it down to minus 6, after which I decide to swap out into Cinnamon Toast Crunch. On the switch, Bite activates my static ability, which is huge since it's gonna let me set up my double teams that much more easily. And a lot of you guys will know that I really hate evasion strategies, and I only resort to them when I think it's absolutely necessary. And even with plus 3 evasion at this point, and minus 6 attack on the Tyrant, it's still doing a lot of damage and managing to hit a few of these rock tombs, so it's still a very open question whether or not I'm gonna be able to pull this fight off. Eventually, I do dodge enough attacks and use Shockwave, taking it down in the red, but of course Grant goes for a Hyper Potion. This is of course expected of a gym battle, and lowers my chances of winning this thing even further, but by some stroke of luck, I managed to dodge every single Rock Tomb and take out the Tyrant. Which makes me very happy that we got through the second gym fight without losing any Pokemon. These big stones are pretty resistant to weathering. Uh, yeah dude, they're rocks. I think they can handle some rain. Leaving the sturdy rocks behind, we have to face the next gym leader, Karina, but not in a gym fight. And facing her two Lucarios can be pretty scary, but the first turn, she just goes for Metal Sound, and since I outspeed, I can just go for Encore, which in turn lets me safely swap out into Cinnamon Toast Crunch, and then do the same to the other Lucario. This gives us access to Route 11, where I find my next encounter, a Dedene, and it is so cute! I name it Cocoa Puffs, 
house and move on to Reflection Cave. To tell you the truth, I'm not even sure if this place is real. Alright, that's a very creepy and fourth wall breaking thing for a video game character to say. And in Reflection Cave, I found my team of electric types' greatest enemy, Psychic Franz. After taking out his Chimeco, he sends in Golet, which I realize I have nothing to hit with. Across my entire team, I only have Rock Smash, Quick Attack, and Electric type moves. Which means that I basically have two options here. Either lose and redo the run, or just try to stall this thing out of moves entirely. And if I'm potentially giving up the past six hours of my life here, I might as well go down trying. I was using Tail Whip to bait out the iron defense and Charm to lower its attack. Heck, I was even using evasion strats and everything available to me to avoid every single thing this thing could throw at me. And after 20 cold and dark minutes, I'd reduce the PP of this thing to a level only George Costanza can understand. And without Jerry around to explain the shrink, Psychic Franz went home without claiming the lives of any of my Pokemon. The mystical Pa bounced back and defeated me instead. Making it through Reflection Cave means we have to take on Karina and her fighting types. And of course she starts out the fight by going for a fake out on Cinnamon Toast Crunch, getting paralyzed from static in the process. But since Amolga's now learned acrobatics, we can make quick work of her entire team. She does, however, get a critical hit in the mandatory Mega Lucario fight, so I guess the run's over? Then on Route 12, we could get both Pachirisu and Mareep, but since Mareep is only available in hordes, I decide to use Honey so that we guarantee it. I name it Cornflakes and immediately evolve it into an Ampharos, after which it's time to take on the Buttman. And let's just say that Stab Super Effective Acrobatics from Amolga tears him a new one. After the fight, I grab myself a good rod and head over to Azure Bay. Here I can not only pick up the Amphrosite, but also fish up a Chinchow. And Applejack's here is at least some protection versus ground type, but that minus special attack nature? Ugh. One level up and it evolves into Lantern. The future doesn't look very bright for me. Oh, I wonder if it's because I'm wearing sunglasses. Well, there is that and the fact that you're a deadbeat criminal. I heard the power's back here in Lumio City. Nobody knows who it was, but they must be awesome. Who do you think it was? Ooh, toughy, Shauna. Could have been anyone but me. I guess there's someone else out there as strong as you, handsome. Yes, definitely. And you should go find them. Now that Shauna will hopefully leave us alone for a bit, we have to go up against Clement in an electric-type standoff. The first turn, Clement goes for a quick attack that barely does any damage at all, and after going for a surf, Clement switches out into Heliolisk to be able to dodge it using dry skin. Ironically, then immediately goes for Thunder Thunderbolt right into our Volt Absorb so we can start setting up stockpiles. But of course, as we boost up, he immediately gets a critical hit Grass Knot as I confuse him with a Confuse Ray. I then start setting up more stockpiles so that he basically can't do any damage to us, and we can start chipping away at his health with Electro Balls, which admittedly won't do too much damage per hit. However, eventually, I get it low enough to where I can swap into Dedenne, and even though it's not a particularly good physical attacker, I can use Dig and take out its remaining health. Lamont's next Pokemon is Magneton, and not wanting to be absolutely destroyed by a Mirror Shot, I swap out into Rice Krispies as he sets up his electric terrain. I then use Encore to lock him into electric terrain, an Electro Ball to break that sturdy, and then I just start spamming Charm in order to use another Encore so that I can safely swap into Dedenne again. And even from Dedenne, a quad effective dig is enough to take out the Magneton, which means we're only left facing the Amalga. But a Swift Volt Switch deals with the rest of its health, meaning that we claim the title of the better electric type trainer in Kalos. We also get the TM for Thunderbolt, which is going to be super useful for every member of the team. Before moving in, any further, I pick up both a Sunstone and a Thunderstone, meaning I can evolve Lucky Charms into Heliolisk and Cheerios into Raichu. Have you ever poked a Pikachu's cheek? It's totally shocking, right? Listen, kid, you're definitely gonna be going places. And speaking of places to go, I move on to Route 14 where I find myself a Stunfisk. You just gotta love this guy, he's an adorable whoopee cushion. <laughs> And with that, it's time to take on Valerie, and I'm really not going to include this fight because it was mostly just Applejack stalling a whole ton, as you can see on screen right now, and it was an incredibly boring fight that didn't have any losses, so we'll take it. You know what? I love really big things. All right, boys, it looks like the debate's been settled. Apparently size does matter. I then go to the Lost Hotel, where I could either find Magneton, Rotom, or Electrode, and since Rotom retains its electric type when you change it into a different machine, it seemed like a no-brainer to have multiple types of Pokemon. But one thing that certainly didn't seem like a no-brainer at the time was how difficult the fight versus Olympia actually would be. She starts out with Sigilyph, and I go for an Acrobatics right away which does a bit under half, after which I can Encore her into Light Screen. Since I get her down into the red, she does end up healing a few times, but eventually the Sigilyph goes down. She then sends in Slowking, and I go for a Volt Switch right away just to get a bit of damage and to be able to swap out into Rotom. 
And this is where things start to get kind of scary, as the Slow King goes for a Calm Mind, meaning it's going to survive the next Thunderbolt, and it's able to use Yawn. I am still able to take out the Slow King with my next Thunderbolt, but I do fall asleep as well, which does mean that I have to hard switch as soon as she sends in her Meow Stick. I swap into Cheerios, really hoping she doesn't go for a Calm Mind on the switch, but she just ends up going for Fake Out. I then use Nuzzle to paralyze the Meow Stick so that Electro Ball can do as much damage as possible as she starts to set up her Calm Minds. The next turn, an Electro Ball does a huge amount of damage, and I'm just hoping she doesn't click Psychic, but she goes for Calm Mind, so theoretically, this should be free. So I click Electro Ball, and it takes her down to like 1 HP, and Psychic gets a crit, taking out Cheerios. Since she's paralyzed and out of potions, I can send in Rice Krispies for the Thunderbolt, but I can't believe I got my first death of the run against Olympia of all people. I then get to choose the red or blue button, one of which destroys the earth, and I press red. Um, okay, shoot, 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 I think I made a mistake. Now you do fight Lysander three times in this game, and the first two went very well, so I'm just gonna show you guys the last one here. He starts out with Mian Xiao, and I send out Cinnamon Toast Crunch. And I immediately just destroy the Mian Xiao with an Acrobatics, as he then sends in his Pyroar. Expecting him to maximize damage by going for Fire Blast, I use Volt Switch to swap out into Apple Jacks in order to tank it as well as possible. It does take me down below half, but at least I can take it out with a single Surf. Expecting a Night Slash from Honchcrow, I decide to swap out into Cocoa Puffs, who can tank it very well, but then I need to use Volt Switch to swap out since I don't want to get hit by a Steel Wing. I send in Lucky Charms, who tanks it very well, and can then take out the Honchcrow with a Volt Switch so that we get to swap out Cinnamon Toast Crunch as Gyarados comes in. I really need Cinnamon Toast Crunch in here since the Gyarados has Earthquake, and it's never going to go for Earthquake against a Flying type, so I decide to use a Volt Switch to get a bit of damage and swap out into Apple Jacks to tank the Aqua Tail, but I've got such low health that it takes me down to 13 8 HP. Now expecting the Earthquake, I swap back into Cinnamon Toast Crunch so that I can go for the Encore the next turn, which means the Gyarados can't hurt me, and I can freely go for a Thunderbolt taking it out. It wouldn't have been a one-shot if I didn't get a crit, but that certainly makes my life easier. Crossing the bridge. And some. Wait a minute. No, 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 no. Hey, do you know what's about to happen? Oh boy, I wish I knew what was about to happen in this fight versus Shauna. See, normally in the game, these fights versus the rivals are not super difficult, but with a monotype team, they can get pretty tough. My first order of business is to Volt Switch out onto Lucky Charms, who luckily gets charmed. I can then easily take out the Delcaddy with a Thunderbolt as she sends in her Gudra, which does have Earthquake, so I Volt Switch out into Cinnamon Toast Crunch, who can dodge it and then go for an Encore. This is pretty much the best method I have to be able to deal with Earthquake, which would otherwise just devastate my team. Then in comes Delphox, and I immediately go for a Volt Switch, swapping out into Apple Jacks. And of course the Delphox goes for a Calm Mind. Delphox is pretty fast, so this is really bad since it goes for Psychic, which does over half, and after Lefty's recovery, I am not able to take another hit, so I decide to swap out into Lucky Charms. And this right here is a sacrificial switch, but I actually managed to survive on 23 HP, so I decide to go for a Bulldoze in order to lower its speed, and unfortunately Lucky Charms is gonna have to bite the dust. Amolga can then outspeed and get the revenge kill with Acrobatics, but I can't believe I did so poorly versus Shauna. Tierno and Trevor, however, are no problem. So in this scene, when Wolfric is just around all the Pokemon, does anyone else think of this image? It's all I can think of. Either way, Wolfric is, of course, our next opponent. However, much like using a real microwave oven, Rotom Heat made this battle quick and simple with a little bit of help from Ampharos taking out the Cryogonal in the end. Which means that we now have all eight gym badges and can move on to Victory Road. And here we have to take on Serena for the final time, but just look at that sky background, that's insane. Now it's kind of sad to say that one of the things that makes this Serena fight difficult is that she has five Pokemon and that most trainers and even the gym leaders don't even have more than three. However, I start the fight by going for a Thunderbolt, getting the Paralysis, after which I get hit by a Psychic and swap out with Volt Switch into Cocoa Puffs. Dedenne does take a substantial chunk from Psychic, after which I can outspeed and take out the Meow Stick. For whatever odd reason, Serena then sends in Vaporeon, so I decide to Volt Switch out right away into Apple Jacks. A resisted Muddy Water pretty much does nothing, after which I can take it out with a couple of Thunderbolts. And since I've got a Water type out, this of course means that Serena's about to send in Chestnut, so I immediately swap out into Frosted Flakes. Seed Bomb does nothing, but I miss my Overheat, and Brick Break does quite a lot of damage, so I decide to swap out into Cinnamon. I don't really sweat it since I know I'm gonna get hit by a resisted Brick Break, and I even get the Paralysis, after which a quad-effective Stab Acrobat 
acrobatics is enough to take it out, and I immediately Volt Switch away from Altaria. It doesn't do that much damage with a Dragon Pulse, and I forgot I didn't teach my Lantern Ice Beam, so I go for Thunderbolt as it then goes for Confide, so I decide to swap out immediately into Cocoa Puffs. Dedenne having its special attack lowered doesn't really matter since I just go for a Play Rough, taking out the Altaria the next turn. However, Super Luck Absol is the most threatening thing on the team here, so I decide to Volt Switch out right away into Corn Flakes. Unfortunately, however, the Absol goes for a Swords Dance, and it doesn't even get a crit Night Slash, taking me down into the red. I then go for Signal Beam, expecting this to take out the Absol, but of course it leaves it on just one HP. Unfortunately, I don't have Quick Attack on anyone, so I decide to swap into Rice Krispies, who is pretty much just going to be sacrificed at this point. It's very unfortunate, since Rice Krispies has Baton Pass, Nasty Plot, and Agility, so it could have made the Elite Four a lot easier. However, we still have one more Pokemon in the box, Stunfisk, and now that we've reached the Elite Four, it's time to add him to the team and get ready for the first member, Seabold and his water types. It's not going to be surprising to anyone that I went for Seabold first, we do have the type advantage for this one. And even though Ampharos is somehow slower than the Postal Service in Sweden, it still outspeeds Cloetzer and takes it out with a Thunderbolt. This naturally means that Seabold sends in his Earthquake using Gyarados, so I instantly swap out into Cinnamon Toast Crunch to dodge it and just go for a quad effective Thunderbolt to take it out. I then Volt Switch the Barbarical for some damage, swapping out into Apple Jacks. I luckily manage to dodge a Stone Edge and then take it out with a Thunderbolt. Next is Starmie, which does unfortunately go for Light Screen, which is going to reduce the damage of my Thunderbolt drastically. However, my first Thunderbolt does get the Paralysis, so another two is enough to take out the Starmie and beat the first Elite Four member. Second up, I decide to try my luck against Wickstrom and his Steel types. His first Pokemon is Klefki, which can be particularly annoying, and I even miss my first Overheat as it hits me with a Dazzling Gleam. It then hits me with a Torment, but since it only starts working the turn you use it, I'm still free to use Overheat and take out the Klefki. This means we have to go up against Probo Pass, and since I have Levitate, I'm expecting it to go for a Power Gem, so I swap into Apple Jacks. Now expecting it to go for an Earth Power, I swap into Cinnamon Toast Crunch, who can obviously dodge it and go for an Encore. I then use Volt Switch to swap out into Frosted Flakes, who can dodge the Earth Power with Levitate and then retaliate with an Overheat, hitting it down to less than half health. Unfortunately though, after that turn, the Encore ends, so I have to swap back into Apple Jacks, expecting the Power Gem, go back into Cinnamon Toast Crunch, use Encore, and then I can do the same thing, swapping into Frosted Flakes, using Overheat to finally take out the Probo Pass. Next is Aegislash, a Pokemon that can be very tricky to deal with, so I decide this is going to be Brand Flakes' time to shine. The Aegislash immediately hits me with a Shadow Claw, which doesn't do too much damage because of my good defenses. It then gets paralyzed, and I use a Mud Shot to lower its speed, which does massive damage. It does that much because Aegislash's base defenses are only 50 in its attack stance. However, with the little health it's at, I can take it out with another Mud Shot after he's done all his healing, sending in Scizor. Expecting him to go for an X Scissor here, I can just send in Frosted Flakes and immediately go for an Overheat, taking it out, winning against Wickstrom. I decide Drasna is probably the most difficult Elite Four member, so I try to tackle Malva first. She starts out with Pyroar, and my obvious option is of course going for Applejacks, who gets hit by a Hyper Voice and doesn't quite take out the Pyroar with a Surf. A Noble Roar does lower my special attack, but it's not enough to stop me from taking out the Pyroar with a Surf afterwards. Expecting an Earthquake from Torkoal, I swap out into Cinnamon Toast Crunch, who then goes for Volt Switch, swapping out into Applejacks. I immediately realize that I could have just gone for Encore and eliminated this threat, so I decide to do the exact same thing all over again, swapping in Cinnamon Toast Crunch on an Earthquake and then going for Encore. I then start hitting the Torkoal with Thunderbolts, and of course I have to deal with a few Hyper Potions, but a couple more Thunderbolts, and it's done. Next up, one of the great threats from the 6th generation, Talonflame. I swap in Applejacks to tank the Flare Blitz, but then Brave Bird does a lot of damage as well. Surf takes it down to where it just barely survives, and of course Malva heals up once again to where Surf takes it to about 30%. Because of Leftover's recovery, I haven't been in any danger, and I can just take out the Talonflame with another Surf. Since I'm at low HP, I decide to swap out against Chandelure into Cornflakes, who gets hit hard by a Shadow Ball. Then after Mega Evolving, I get hit by Confide, but still do about 60% damage with a Power Gem. Another Confide lowers my special attack even further, but a Power Gem at this amount of health is enough to take it out, beating Malva. This means the only Elite Four member we still have to face is Drasna and her Dragon types. She leads with Dragalge as Cinnamon Toast Crunch initiates with an Acrobatics, doing a little bit above half, but getting poisoned as well and hit by Sludge Bomb. Having taken a beating, I go for Volt Switch for just a little bit extra chip damage, swapping out into Cornflakes, who also gets poisoned by the Sludge Bomb. And once again, even though Mega Amphros is slower than a snail with a ball and chain, it outspeeds Dragalge and takes it out with a Dragon Pulse. Not wanting to get slaughtered by Altaria, I swap out into Frosted Flakes, who 
gets hit by a Dragon Pulse for not too much damage. I then go for a Thunder Wave to paralyze Altaria and do more damage with Hex as it sets up with Cotton Guard and I can then start using Hex to deal as much damage as possible. I do manage to dodge a couple Sings, but eventually Drasna decides to use a full restore healing off that paralysis, which means Hex isn't doing anything at all. After paralyzing the Altaria again, getting hit by a Dragon Pulse and then having it set up a Cotton Guard on me, I decide it's time to swap out of Frosted Flakes into Apple Jacks. And unfortunately, the Altaria manages to connect with a Sing the turn I swap in, but funny enough, it gets paralyzed the turn that I'm asleep. I do end up getting hit by one Dragon Pulse, but the next turn when I wake up, I had just been spamming Stockpile, so I do set one up, but not wanting to get hit by Sing again, I decide to go for Ice Beam, taking out the Altaria. Since I have a Stockpile up, I'm not afraid of Noivern, but it even gets a critical hit and doesn't do that much damage with Dragon Pulse, so a couple of Ice Beam just takes it out. Finally, there's Drudagon, and he's probably going to hit me with a Dragon Tail since I have a boost, so I decide to go for as much damage as possible with Ice Beam as it Dragon Tails me out. It swaps me out into Brand Flakes, which is perfect since I can lower this thing's speed with a Mud Shot, but it just goes for a revenge, so I can get off another mud shot, having its speed effectively before it Dragon Tails me out. It once again perfectly swaps me out into Coco Puffs, who can use Charm and not even be hit by Dragon Tail here, so Retaliate doesn't do too much damage, and a play rough is enough to take it out, beating Drasna. This means there's only one trainer standing in between me and victory for my electric types. So, with a full team in tow and no losses versus the Elite Four, it's time to take on Diantha. She leads Halucha, and I lead with the MVP of this run, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, who gets hit by a Poison Jab and then hits back with an Acrobatics, taking it out in one shot. Pyrantrum is probably going to go for Head Smash, so I decide to Volt Switch to just get a little bit of damage, swapping out into Brand Flakes, who's probably the Mon that can take this the best. Now that I'm expecting an Earthquake, I once again swap into Cinnamon Toast Crunch, who can go for Encore, which means that Tyrantrum's days are pretty much numbered. She does end up using a Full Restore on Tyrantrum, but after a few more Encores and Thunderbolts, it goes down. Aurorus only has Blizzard and Thunder to attack with, so I can safely Bolt Switch out into Applejacks. Seeing that I resist one of her moves and I'm immune to the other, I can just stockpile up three times here, gaining as much defense as I'm ever going to need. Then once I've used my three stockpiles, it's time to start attacking, and she did end up using another full restore here, but eventually I managed to take it out with another Surf. Gorgeist is very likely to come out next since it's super effective with Seed Bomb, but because of my three stockpiles, I'm not exactly afraid of that, and a couple of Ice Beams takes it out. At this point, the only thing standing in Lantern's way from just sweeping through Diantha is that I ran out of Ice Beams versus Gudra, meaning that I have to swap out. The main problem with this is that I now don't have any defense boosts going into Mega Gardevoir later on. She does end up healing Gudra, and I would take it out with two play roughs, but I miss the second one and just barely survive in the red from a Fire Blast. Another play rough takes it out, meaning we're only left with Diantha's final Pokemon, Mega Gardevoir. Knowing that Moonblast would absolutely destroy me, I swap out into Frosted Flakes as she Mega Evolves, and it doesn't do too much damage, but then the next turn, Psychic takes me down to just 5 HP. I heal up with my Eapapa Berry, but unfortunately, I checked my personality traits wrong, get confused, and Frosted Flakes just gets taken out. This is bad, since I would have been able to paralyze the Mega Gardevoir with Thunder Wave, but Bran Flakes comes in, can tank a Moonblast, and at least slower its speed before it goes down to another Moonblast. Now that the casualties are racking up, I decide to swap out into my own Mega Evolution, Ampharos. Now, even though I did manage to lower Mega Gardevoir's speed, it still outspeeds my Mega Ampharos. I mean, yes, I've been going on about how slow it is, and I still get to use a Signal Beam that does nothing. Now that I've lost half my team, I decide to send in Dedenne and go for a Volt Switch to just get some more damage and swap out into Applejacks. Because I gave Dedenne a King's Rock, I actually get the Flinch and can swap in Lantern freely and go for a Surf. The next turn, I then go for another Surf, taking the Gardevoir into the red as it takes me out with a Moonblast. At this point, I've lost two-thirds of my team trying to fight this thing, and she of course has another Full Restore! I thought it was over at this point, but then Emolga shows me what a true MVP it is by doing over half damage and beating the Mega Gardevoir once and for all. And that's how I beat a Pokémon Y Hardcore Nuzlocke using only Electric types. Look, did I know going into this thing that Emolga, Dedenne, and Minun would be absolutely absolute MVPs of the team? Nope, but I'm certainly glad I got to find out. And look, if you enjoy watching these runs, you could do me a little bit of a favor do and click the like down below. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, what are you doing? So as always, let me know what run you want me to do next in the comments down below. And until we see each other next time, have a good one.